Welcome to our recorded Mass here at All Saints Parish. Assisting us this morning are Joyce Duncan, who is our lector. Mike Wathen is our cameraman and technician, and he and Amy Eager will put it on the web and the app and wherever you may be looking for it. And watching us all and praying with us is Sister Joan Miller. So it's good to have you all here and thank you for your service. We're celebrating today the 24th Sunday of the year and we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your My brothers and sisters, the Lord tells us today that his one commandment is that we love one another and that includes our enemies. And he says that we should forgive those we have something against. So let's take a moment to reflect on how well we're doing. Lord Jesus, you know that it is very difficult for us to forgive those who have hurt us. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Zerah. Anger and wrath, these also are abominations, yet a sinner holds on to them. The vengeful will face the Lord's vengeance, for he keeps a strict account of their sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? If someone has no mercy towards another like himself, can he then seek pardon for his own sins? If a mere mortal harbors wrath, who will make an atoning sacrifice for his sins? Remember the end of your life and set enmity aside. Remember corruption and death and be true to the commandments. Remember the commandments, and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Nor, not according to our sins, does he deal with us, nor does he requite us According to our crimes, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, 
so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he, he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, beginning with verse 21. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions in payment of the debt. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience on with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave all the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. <coughs> then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. His fellow slaves saw what had happened, and they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he paid his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you so my, father, so my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel has some interesting questions, uh, and I'd like to share a story with you, but before, let's look at the questions. I understand the rabbis of the day, when people ask, how many times should I forgive someone, they said three. And so Peter thought he was being very generous when he suggested that he should forgive maybe seven times. 
And Jesus says in our translation, no, forgive 77 times. And other translations say 70 times, seven times. That gets you to about 490, I think. So whatever, it's a bunch, a whole lot of times. Just never stop forgiving. And the amount of the debt is enormous. There's a couple of different ways to figure it, but it's like the king loaned him money in excess of the national debt, for example, and his fellow slave, our servant, owed him just like a day's wage, and there was no comparison between the amounts. And so after he had been forgiven, the servant went to his fellow servant and said, pay me back what you owe. Can you imagine he, without taking a breath almost, he forgot about the mercy that had been shown him and demanded payment from his fellow slave, fellow servant, who owed him mere pittance. And the king got upset. So on the one hand, it makes sense. On the other hand, if the king is supposed to be forgiving and forgiving and forgiving, how could he, so this other slave that he had forgiven the first time into prison and, and have him tortured, etc. I don't know the answer to that, but it is a question. And part of it, I think, revolves around the fact that he was so centered on himself that he didn't even think of forgiveness. He couldn't consider forgiveness as a possibility of anybody else. He liked to get it himself, but could not offer it to others. And so I think he was beyond forgiveness. He couldn't forgive himself even. So maybe there's some wisdom in there somewhere, but I'm not sure, I don't have the perfect answer, I'm sorry. But let's just, let's just talk about forgiveness. And the example that he gives here is talks about money forgiveness, people who owe debts. But forgiveness is much broader than that. And I see forgiveness as when we, are, when we hurt another or another hurts us, we need to forgive back and forth. We're into this Jewish feast of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is coming up. When, we, when the Jews looked at their sins for the past year and asked forgiveness of God and sometimes even asked forgiveness of those they had offended, which is perfect, which is what God is asking for today. So let me tell you a little story about what happened to me when I was a kid. I told you the story last week about my dad and how defending of me he was, how loving and how generous, and he was, almost all the time. Let me tell you about one time when he was not. The only time I can remember, actually. I was, after school, I went down to a friend's house. We had a marvelous model train set up in his basement. And we played for that, with that for a while. My parents knew where I was. When it was time for supper, as we called it, they called and said, it's time, come home. And I was not always terribly prompt in obeying their requests. This time I thought I did pretty well, but I got sort of wound up in things perhaps. But anyhow, eventually I walked out of the house, came down the alley towards my house, and as I reached the street, I had to go around the garage to my house, and there was my dad, just right around the corner there. And it surprised me, and he grabbed me and pulled me into the garage, and he had a switch of some sort and started beating on me. And to this day, I do not know what that was all about. I don't know if it's just because I was late or because something was going on or whether he had some problems of his own that were being taken out on me, but he just was beating on me. Now, and I was really offended because I felt I had been violated. And I was so angry at him that I think I may have even hated him for a while. But I couldn't do anything with it because he was dad and he was big and I was not. And I went inside the house and told my mother how angry I was. 
but I never did speak to him about it. He never spoke to me about it. And time went on, years passed, years and years and years and years. And I think it was wearing on me. It was like a, like a depression was setting in. It was just a kind of a numb feeling. All feelings were kind of numb. There was no highs and lows, it was just numb. And I began to wonder about that and begin to analyze it. And I thought, I wonder if it goes back to that time with my dad. I wonder if there's any connection. Now, by this time, my dad is dead. So, what can I do? So what I did was pull up a, an image of him in my mind and look him in the face and say, Dad, I don't know what was going on. I have no idea, but you took me totally by surprise and made me very, very angry. But for whatever it was, I forgive you. And I kept saying that, I forgive you. And when I did that, the anger just began to dispel, to disappear, to fade away. And I could feel the effects almost immediately, and over time, very much so. So that it helps me. Didn't help him much, although I'm hopeful that he witnessed that and came to some reconciliation. So I guess the point is, first of all, I'm sure lots of kids face a lot more from their parents. Every day they may be beaten like that. But for me it was such a total surprise that it threw me into shock. Um, the other thing is that if you have been injured by someone, physically, mentally, emotionally, if you have been abused, it's not good to forgive the person if they're alive face to face because they can abuse you again. Abusers tend to, to do that. So you don't want to forgive somebody to their face who's been abused, but you can do it in your mind, as I did. Tell them that they're forgiven and let it go and really forgive. And maybe repeat that over and over and over in your life and, tell, and ask the Lord to help you forgive so that it is gone. And sometimes you can forgive face to face and that is good if you know that you're not going to be abused anymore. So this is what the Lord is asking us to do today. If we're going to love one another, it means we forgive one another. So let's take a moment to reflect on who do we have to forgive? Who in your life has hurt you? Or who have you hurt? And who do you need to go to and ask forgiveness or whatever. So let's just take a moment to think and pray that the Lord will help us to forgive. We believe that the Lord forgives us over and over and over again and expects us to pass that forgiveness on to others. Let's profess that faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
you faithfully look past our sins and faults to see only the good in us. Help us to do the same for all our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are weary of the world and seek acceptance, may they find a warm welcome in your church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have caused great pain and injury in our society, may we draw from your grace for the power to forgive and bring healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer from the catastrophes of earthquake and flood, console them in their loss and give them the strength to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless our parish picnic today. May the fun and festivities help bond as a spiritual family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick, especially the terminally ill, touch them with the reassuring presence of your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our deceased brothers and sisters, through the gift of your mercy and forgiveness, May they know eternal joy and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the vine, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received it. the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Look with favor on our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered far by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might be seen as the church, 
And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, <coughs> in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. <coughs> And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the King, Father, and the Lord, and the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer one another a share of the silence. Sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Have Lamb mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned from my roots, but I must say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And now let us pray for justice. Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor, a world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them, a world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect, a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.